G'day guys, this is a video on the sort of inadequacies of the vegan diet in regards to taurine. Let me just share the screen, first of all. Okay, so just sort of capping, um, just as a general thing, the synthesis of basically taurine, um, so that does happen endogenously in humans. So when you're very young, a very child, you don't basically synthesize any. Um, you have to get it from your mum. So when you're, you get it from breast milk um, and you get it from your mother when you're in the womb. So it's critical for a lot of things. So that's how you, you basically get it. And the, the way the body actually synthesizes it um, you know, internally is with the amino acids, methionine and cysteine. Okay. So they go through a, a, a certain enzymatic pathway that uh, basically synthesizes it. Um, um, sulfinic acid, I think it's called. And then there's another pathway after that, some sort of, yeah, just, yeah. Can't remember exactly the entire um, sort of pathway, but uh, suffice to know that, you know, methionine and cysteine um, tend to be much higher in animal foods anyway. So, but let's just go to this study, plasma and urine taurine levels in vegans. So the, we'll just read the abstract and then we'll go and look at some of the data and then we'll flow from there. Plasma taurine levels and urine taurine excretion were measured in 12 strict vegetarian slash vegan males who had maintained a vegan diet for 53 plus um, 26 month type thing. So more or less within a year period and in 12 male non-vegetarian control subjects. I suspect those sort of males are probably on a standard diet. So we're not talking about here ketogenic or anything like that. Um, okay, let's move on. Plasma taurine levels were differed. So 45 against 58 millimoles. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, so even though as an adult, you can synthesize a certain amount, it does decline with age. I mean, these were, you know, they, these weren't old men and they weren't small children. So they're at an age where they can biosynthesize a certain amount. And, uh, you know, so that I suspect if you're looking at elderly people or extremely young people, those differences would be even more magnified. So just keep that in mind, um, especially for you know pregnant women who are vegan. Uh, they need to be very careful in this regard. Uh, the urinary taurine excretion was lower, obviously. If you're consuming less, your body tries to hold on to as much as possible. So it will actually lower the excretion. And the urinary um, NP, so methyl histidine um, was barely detectable. So this one here is this one here. So what the, um, he describes it in the uh, of, we'll just talk about in methylhistidine with primary structure of rabbit skeletal muscle, myosin, light chain kinase. The data shows the first time that known to, as a rare mammalian ur urine amino acid is a protein constituent. So it's a very important element in the, that regard of you know, of our protein. So keep that in mind as well. And sort of was significantly reduced in the vegans. Um, sorry, was barely detectable 
in the vegans. So that's a problem. Well, it's an important constituent of protein. So barely detectable. No wonder they have a lot of issues when it comes to protein. The urinary NT methylhistidine was significantly reduced in vegans. And yeah, I'm not going to go into that. So we'll just look at this and what it says that when you've actually got, you know, you know, sort of a low protein sort of thing. Oops, go back. That's why in both these groups, it was slightly reduced more in the vegans, but also in these guys, you know, that are just doing a standard diet, you know, it wasn't extremely high, so to speak. Usually you know, somebody who's on an animal-based diet or species appropriate diet would have higher levels. Another reason, you know, why quality protein plays a role even here. And that does have an effect on muscle protein degradation. Okay. So they were looking at here at basically boilers. So I'm not going to really go into that because it's not, it's, it's just to give you guys an idea that uh, our diet, which is very high in a lot of these sort of substances in terms of amino acids, but also in a lot of the peptides. I mean, there are shitloads of peptides in animal foods, you know, of different sorts, including taurine, but there's a whole lot of different stuff in there that basically have a lot of other biological pro um, effects. Very important. As I say, you know, you've got flesh, you're not a plant. You need basically flesh from other animals to basically get the all the elements that are required. And there are probably a whole lot of other elements. There, there are heaps and heaps of elements that we know very little about. That's the reality. Um, we know they exist in meat, but we haven't researched them. So, you know, forget about fake meats. They're never going to basically replace real meat in terms of maximum nutrition and the importance. So that's just bogus. Anyway, let's just continue. Analysis of three-day dietary diaries kept by the vegans indicated marginal to adequate intake of protein, obviously because I disagree with that. And that's because, you know, they've um, carbohydrates, which is irrelevant since endogenously you can produce it. Vitamin B6, methionine, and cysteine. And again, these numbers are coming from, you know, chronometers and stuff like that that say, oh, you can get these things. That, you know, we know they're very poor bioavailability in, in plants. Um, we don't, I've covered that before, so can go and check, check that out. Inadequate intake of zinc, obviously because they're not re eating red meat, are they? And negligible intake of taurine, obviously again, because they're not eating meat. Prolonged absence of dietary taurine in intake causes decreases in plasma taurine, which we've seen, and severely restricted urinary taurine output which we also see because the body's trying to hold on. Um, we'll just go here to this table. When we're looking at taurine, it's pretty much negligible in the diet from what they've actually provided. And they cover certain of the others. Obviously the zinc is low. We won't waste our time with all that. We'll just go down to the next table Plasma concentration, so the control group and the vegans. So taurine, obviously, there's a difference there. The other stuff, and that again, that presupposes this cysteine and methionine all pre presupposes that, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's all about, you know, chronometer and shit like that, those sort of things measured in plants and but we ignore the bioavailability so quantities don't mean anything 
So when we're looking here at the taurine excretion, it's much lower. These guys are, you know, obviously probably eating hamburgers and whatever else. It's going to be higher. And when we're looking at cysteine, they're excreting far more. And there's good reasons why they're excreting far more of um, cysteine, which is very, uh, very important. I mean, they, they have uh, a diet which is much poorer in both methionine and cysteine, you know, and, you know, they, they are losing in particular cysteine, which is another important, you know, in sulfur and methylation. And they, they're not, you know, and basically they are losing because they don't get enough methionine in their diet to basically support, you know, the methylation side of things. And I've talked about it in the, in the previous video. So they, on top of that, they're getting very, they're losing quite a bit of cysteine compared to, and that just shows that basically um, the imbalance in the amino acids. So in order to utilize them, you have to have a, proper balance so you'll lose more of certain things so it doesn't surprise me in in this re, in this regard whatsoever you know it's you know it's quite um damn obvious um what's what's happening but when it comes to these things people need to be really careful and i always say you know if somebody's uh, you know like a vegan mother and she's nursing or breastfeeding or, you know, has a child, the needs for taurine, are, you know, go up quite a bit. And I would say to that mother, you may have a, you know, a certain view outlook, which I disagree with, but at a minimum supplement taurine, supplement for your child taurine, and supplement to maintain good levels so you could actually give it in breast milk um, so it's really damn important for the general community um you know i mean for a child it's very important for you know brain development and all that for older people it, you know as we decline our taurine take um you know old biosynthesis declines as i've talked about especially after 65 it collapses falls off the off the cliff you know for people that are on plant-based diets or whatever, it becomes even way more important to supplement. Um, you know, we carnies can just eat more meat in that regard. It's very important for the blood pressure, you know, maintains healthy blood pressure. And I've talked about this before, about the sort of fluids, um, the intra and extracellular fluids, the way it actually, the osmotic sort of, uh, um, effect that it has on maintaining a really good homeostasis, which means that it improves overall, um, you know, blood pressure regulation. So another important thing, um, has an effect on controlling blood glucose. Now, obviously it's not, you know, if you're, you're guzzling down shit loads, it's not gonna really help, but it does help a bit. It does act as an antioxidant as well, you know. Um, so it can, help with reducing oxidative stress. Um, it's known that low uh, taurine levels, people that have basically got like retinol or um, damage or, you know, fibrotic tissue around, um, even in their eyes, they, they tend to do, they tend to have lower taurine levels. So increasing your taurine levels are going to help there as well. You know, so it's, very important in that regard but my biggest concern is obviously the breastfeeding mothers um, and the you know young children they really need to be getting that in their in their diet if they'd um if they're not they need to you know they people have got this sort of ideology you know please for your kids um supplement um very important it's a very important sulfur amino acid. It is, the requirements probably go up. Now there's no studies, so I can't actually tell you what the requirements are for somebody on the vegan diet. Um, 
will probably go up because of the higher oxalates in the diet. So they will um, cause greater deficiency, you know, on top of that. So, and that would be even in a, in a healthy young person. It's probably could be a, a, an, an element there. It's hard to know exactly how much that is um, due to, you know, the lack of other amino acids very important for the biosynthesis or, you know, partially affected also by the high oxalates in the diet. So there could be a, a number of factors. So, you know, something to throw out there, which is important. But I would say that it is a very important sulfur amino acid, um, very important for maintaining healthy, um, uh, you know, liver and also basically also maintaining healthy bile flow as well. Um, important for maintaining good, healthy um, functioning of the pancreas as well. So uh, in that regard, it should be in the diet. Um, and if it's not, you know, you, you, will, you will suffer um, in that, that regard. The other thing is that um, vegans also need to understand that in all mammals, when it comes to all mammals, the synthesis, you know, this sort of synthesis of that, this pathway does happen in the pancreas. Um, but this also probably goes for people who are diabetics and stuff like that as well. But being on a high um, sugar diet is probably going to be taxing your pancreas to a large extent. Um, but this goes also for people who are diabetic, like engaging the Randall cycle, um, since you know synthesis doesn't does an important important steps of of uh, taurine biosynthesis do happen in the pancreas. It's very important that uh, you know people realise that they need to maintain a healthy pancreas. So, and also taurine because it deals with better bile flow, um, better, you know, dealing with fibrotic tissue, in both pancreas and other, other tissue. It's probably going to be very important to, you know, get some level of supplementation. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I'll leave it at that. See you.